Uh, but uh, let's have a listen to the former director general of the BBC, Tony Hall, today, who was hauled in front of a parliamentary committee. It's not for me to second guess directors or people who are running large departments. You Again, I go back, you trust them. You trust them to make the judgments, to do all the soundings out that need to be done. Uh, I read in Mr. Macquarie's report that uh, uh, that Jonathan Munro had spoken to Steve Hewlett, the, uh, the former editor of Panorama, someone who, who you would, whose judgment uh, you would trust. But you know, they came to their own decision about the rehiring of uh, of, of Martin Bashir. Um, and as I say, it's also clear that if we knew then what we know now, then of course he wouldn't have been rehired. Well, Tony Hall uh, knew a lot about uh, Martin Bashir because he investigated the Diana interview way back in 1996. The interview, of course, happened in 1995. And Tony Hall, as the head of news then, established that Martin Bashir had used very nefarious methods, forged bank statements and the like, to seduce Diana in a vulnerable state into that interview. So he's not exactly being uh, particularly genuous when he talks in that respect he as the director general when they rehired martin bashir in 2016 he must have known about it you don't rehire the guy who got that iconic interview uh, without knowing about it the director general must have known Uh, so the bbc has marked its own homework in an inquiry into this and it says uh, that there is no evidence that he was rehired to cover up the diana interview scandal no one asked that question. They're answering a question that has never been asked. Let's talk to the Freedom Association's Andrew Allison. Good evening, Andrew. Good evening, Kevin. Uh, The BBC marking its own homework. Surprise, surprise. Its uh, internal investigation reveals they did nothing wrong when they rehired Martin Bashir and they certainly didn't rehire him as a cover-up of the Diana uh, interview scandal. Uh, But no one ever said that they did. What we want to know is why they did it. Why did yeah, they rehire this guy? Why can't they be transparent about that? Yeah, well, well precisely. And they also rehired him as the uh, religious affairs editor as well, which sort of, uh, <laughs> well... <laughs> Makes you want to just go, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, doesn't it just, you know, he's supposed to have ethics, isn't he? Uh, I mean, we just do want some transparency out of all of this, as you say, Kevin. Uh, I mean, Tony Hall, as you said in your introduction, um investigated all of this as the head of of BBC News. Now, he either didn't do a particularly great investigation um, or he he brushed a lot of stuff underneath the carpet. It could be that Tony Hall just thinks that people couldn't possibly behave like that in the BBC. Who knows? But we certainly need to know now and we certainly need to know why he was rehired. And why does the BBC keep doing this? I keep asking myself because it just prolongs the story, doesn't it? If you get things out in the open, whether whether it's good or whether it's bad, mm. it tends to kill a story off eventually. But but if you don't kill it off, it just keeps running and running. And it's a good old technique if you're trying to sort of shut up something uh, that's causing problems. Ask a question uh, that no one's answering and then answer it yourself. And it looks like you've reached some sort of conclusion. So no one is suggesting the BBC rehired Martin Bashir to cover up the Diana interview scandal. That would be ridiculous. Uh, He had been out of the BBC for 21 years or 20 years. So he could have uh, shot his mouth out at any point. So that's ridiculous. No one ever asked that question. The question we are asking is why did you rehire a man who conned Princess Diana to your certain knowledge. Uh, And it does go up to Tony Hall's in basket. He was the director, he was the head of news who investigated Bashir, established that nefarious techniques were used, and then he was the director general when this man was rehired. And don't tell me that you rehire a massive name like Martin Bashir, uh, the gainer of that iconic Princess Diana interview that won him and the BBC BAFTAs. Don't tell me the BBC News Department rehires that that guy and the Director General doesn't know. That's just ludicrous. Yeah, it is ludicrous. Of course, Tony Hall must have known about it. And of course, Tony Hall knew exactly that there's various techniques that, if you want to call them techniques, 
um, very nefarious ways of, uh, of of securing that interview. So Tony Hall knew all about that. Surely there must have been some alarm bells ringing somewhere in the BBC. And it can't be just Tony Hall who knew about that. I mean, people who work in the BBC tend to stay there for many decades. Uh, they gradually work their way up the, the greasy pole. So there has to have been more people who knew that there was something wrong about the way that Martin Bashir secured that interview all those years ago. Uh, and yet no one seems to have said anything. Yes, and as you quite rightly say, uh, Andrew, uh, you know, if you want to stop a storm raging, uh, you be honest, be transparent, be open. The reason this Bashir storm uh, shows no sign of abating for the BBC is they're not being transparent with us. And they never really have been. I mean, look at the Jimmy Savile thing. Um, so many people saying, well, we always had our suspicions. We thought he was up to no good, but we weren't quite sure. It's as if nobody asked the question. And, and there was children involved in that in that situation, children who were getting abused. And yet nobody inside the BBC seemed to want to want to talk about it. Uh, the, the, again, that was one to be to, to be swept underneath the carpet. Yeah, I'll tell you the question I'd like to ask Tony Hall, or, or let's call him by his tre- correct title, Man of the People, Lord Hall of Birkenhead. I'd like to ask him how he managed to take over as Director General when the BBC was at that terribly low ebb, um, in mired, m- enmeshed in that uh, Jimmy Savile scandal, which caused the resignation of his predecessor, George Entwistle. They'd only been there about 10 minutes, but he sort of got involved in a cover up of that. Uh, Tony Hall took over uh, this sinking ship. It was to steady the ship. I'd like to ask him how uh, several years later, when he stepped down, he managed to leave the BBC in an even worse state. No mean feat, eh? Well, quite. I mean, he was a pretty disastrous. He really uh, was, general. Andrew. He really was. I, I mean, you know, there's no other way of uh, of describing it. I mean, the BBC is in, a, in an awful position now. In some ways, actually worse than it was after George Entwistle uh, was forced to resign all those years ago. Uh, one can only hope that Tim Davy is going to do a better job. But, but, you know, the jury's out on him as well, I'm, I'm afraid. It certainly is. I mean, the man's spending £100 million on diversity. Why don't you spend yeah. some, mo- some money on some decent programmes, something like that? Call me controversial. Oh, it's a very controversial thing. I mean, I mean, surely what we really want is more things like Pooch Perfect, don't we? You know, that, that, that oh. absolutely fantastic <laughs> primetime show on the BBC. Yeah, they're, they're argu- arguably cruel. Animal. Yeah, arguably cruel to animals as well. Dying uh, poodles and other dogs in various colours. It wasn't even uh, a nice animal project. But yes, uh, some of the programmes they put out recently, let's not forget, lest we forget Gordon Ramsay's bank balance. I mean, they're putting out trash programmes, spending zillions on ludicrous diversity projects. Uh, Tim Davey, the jury's out. I wish him well, but so far he looks like just another BBC Director General and the portents are not good. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Andrew Allison.